Praise God. God bless you all. We thank you for what you have done for us, Lord Jesus. May your name be glorified. Teach us from your word and help us to align our lives to your word in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Amen. Join me as I read from the book of Titus chapter 2 verse 11 downwards. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that deny ungodliness and what lost. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Praise God. We want to look at the topic grace. 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 Grace, grace. God the Father always thinks of grace. Whenever he is dealing with nations or individuals, whether he is uh, exercising his divine justice, his wrath, or his love, or even his mercy, in whatever a dispensation or time frame, God always thinks of grace at all times and in all circumstances you can look into second corinthians chapter 5 verse 22 genesis chapter 15 verse 6 grace depends solely on the character of god and entire and entirely excludes human ability grace does not require man's ability not human merit not human effort not your achievement so therefore an awareness of the full meaning of grace is a giant step towards a, a true humility so what is grace grace has a variety of translations in the new testament in the same favor uh, 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 gratitude benefit and so on and so forth so you can check through luke chapter 1 verse 30 romans chapter 6 verse 16 to 23 but there are distortions of grace there are things that grace is not but that men has taken it to be number one grace is sometimes taken to mean uh, it's a, uh, a permissiveness to commit sin. No. Grace is being used as, as an excuse for an overt sin. That is not what the Bible teaches. Look at Romans chapter 6 verse 1 and 2. Then read Jude chapter 4. Secondly, grace is sometimes taken as permission to be lazy. Especially to skip Bible studies. To skip uh, the activities of God. We will always say, oh, uh, grace is sufficient for me. And I have the grace of God. No, you know, praise the Lord. Uh, this emphasizes sins of omission. But this idea violates all of the Bible's commands to study, to be diligent, to be oriented to grace. Look, look at Hebrews chapter 6 verse 11 and 12. Uh, for Second Peter chapter 1 verse 5. Then there are categories of grace. We have common grace, saving grace, and li living grace, and a surpassing grace. Common grace is the grace that is a are uh, uh, common to all mankind saved or unsaved look at romans chapter 1 verse 18 to 22 i leave you with uh, acts chapter 17 verse 22 to 30 let me give you those two verses then saving grace that is the gift of god that lest any man should boast is the saving grace from all for for the people that is the grace that applied to lost sinners it covers the categories of doctrines which deals with all that Christ did for us on the cross. Check Romans chapter 3 verse 23 and 24. Check Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. Then the living grace, God provides everything that is needed for our prosperous, happy life for any believer who has tasted grace and avails himself of little knowledge to this grace of God. Brethren, the Christian is commanded to grow in grace. So every facet of a Christian life requires an applied understanding of the word and orientation to the grace of God. Check 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Grace in daily provision. Psalm 84, verse 11. Grace in prayers. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. We need grace in suffering. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Verses 9 
and 10. Grace in releasing the power of God. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Grace in victory over sin. We need grace to overcome sin. Romans chapter 6, verse 14. You need grace for your spiritual growth. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. Look also into 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. Then uh, we need grace. Grace for spiritual gift, like I said. You can also check Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7. Check Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. Then we need grace in the method of living. Some people does not know how to live. That's why they double from one point to another, uh, committing sin, entering from one sin to another. The Bible says they commit more sin. We need grace for in our method of living. Check Hebrews 12, 28. Then we need grace in the worship of God. There is no man that can worship God all by himself. We need the grace of God to worship him. Not even at this time in the world that the whole world is facing. We need the grace of God. Uh, uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Then we go to surpassing grace. What is surpassing grace? That is the grace of God in eternity. Praise the Lord God. It is what we will receive from God after life. What we receive from him because of our salvation. What we will receive from God as crowns or rewards to be laid at the feet of Christ Jesus. Check John chapter 14 verse 13. Then how do you appropriate the grace of God as we conclude? One, you have to confess your personal sin to God. Do not keep any sin in you. That is what the devil will use to destroy you. Confess sins to the Lord God and he will forgive you and move away from it. Live a faith rest life. Believe in the scripture daily and thirdly occupy with Christ. Keep your mind on grace. Think on the things that profit at the kingdom of God. Live in the word of God and lastly let the Holy Spirit of God fill you and direct you. As we conclude, grace or graciousness is the most outstanding quality of the mature believer in Christ. The new believer has tasted grace. As he grows in Christ, he learns to think grace. That is outward. Rather than thinking inward, that is pride. So I, I admonish us today, as advanced Christians, is gracious, forgiving and assuming, that we should align ourselves to the grace of God. May the Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray as we prepare your question. Father, we thank you. The grace that leads us to salvation, let that grace be sufficient for us all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.